How's it going, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of Crypto Clout. I am your host, FaZe Crypto, and today we will be talking about the future of cryptocurrency, probably one of the greatest topics of discussion on this channel, and will probably solidify the work that we've been doing on this side of the internet. In history, I'm pretty sure and confident that people will look back on the various different predictions that have been made by this channel and hope that they were uh, in the know. I mean, wish that they were people who were on this side. I mean, you... The viewer are actually in a very privileged position to be aware of cryptocurrency at this stage. Uh, and I'd like to talk about smart contracts. I like to talk about, in particular, Bitcoin. Um, and, you know, of course, fiat is easy money because it's easy to inflate. Gold is hard money because it's hard to inflate. Bitcoin, unique because it's impossible to inflate beyond 21 million Bitcoins. Uh, Bitcoin, the hardest money uh, in the world, is uh, still the smallest. Uh, what is this to change? And of course, uh, global money at 90T, uh, gold at 18, and then of course, Bitcoin at 0. 0.134 trillion. And uh, this is very interesting. Of course, uh, following up on that, um, John McCafe sort of did comment on something um, that's relevant, almost a way of backing out of his uh, eating his dick in 12 months, calling it a ruse to onboard new users. It worked. Um, Bitcoin uh, was first. Uh, it's an ancient technology. I'll know it. Um, newer blockchains have privacy, smart contracts, distributed apps, and more. Bitcoin is our future, question mark, was the automobile, uh, well, the Model T, the future of automobiles. Uh, so, I mean, a little disappointing to see that John McAfee actually wasn't um, going to eat his dick. I think all knew it, but it was going to be very interesting to see how uh, he, you know, evolved his uh, claims there. And um, I don't think anybody could have um, predicted it better uh, that he, of course, was not going to eat his dick. Uh, but um, so talking about Cardano and you know, talking about the uh, test net and, you know, and re relevant to that whole conversation, I think that the one thing, uh, you know, the key takeaway of uh, what McAfee was talking about, you know, involving smart contracts, uh, just talking about privacy, I think he did a good job of describing uh, Cardano. I mean, the fact of the matter is that we are still very early uh, in the cryptocurrency space and I mean whether or not uh, we see Bitcoin sort of uh, you know harboring out the storm and managing to um, you know still maintain its dominance um, we have to understand exactly what's going to happen in terms of all the different actors who are going to have a interest in the growing cryptocurrency uh, space and in fact what sort of dominance we could actually expect um, now there was just of course why I'm always sort of trying to give the daily updates on here because uh, the fact of the matter is that the more information that we get presented with um, you know perspectives can shift quite rapidly so when we want to talk about like a seven thousand dollar bitcoin or even the potential of seeing a bitcoin you know short term long term sort of bull run scenario uh, we really do have to talk about the, uh, the the you know basically Achilles heel of uh, the cryptocurrency space which is the ever evolving sort of nature of the technologies and when it comes down to scientific framework academic uh, and all these different things Cardano uh, again and again seems to take the cake and uh, absorb a lot of the attention <clears throat> Of course, while we're talking about, you know, de decentralized public blockchain and we're looking at uh, where the Internet is headed and a lot of these different variables, uh, it is very interesting. So, I mean, I want to talk about this article, uh, China to BTC miners, slow your operations a bit. Uh, so China recently announced that all cryptocurrency mining activity would be legal um, within its borders. Uh, this was a big deal uh, considering the country's strained relationship with Bitcoin and its altcoin uh, cousins. Uh, for one thing, uh, regulators were long debating over whether the uh, extinction of new coins would be made uh, illegal considering doing so allegedly causes environmental damage. Uh, so, I mean, this is an interesting a uh, little perspective here. I mean, it is, um, I mean, all eyes are sort of on China, I would say, uh, that now. I mean, this sort of does speak in a large sense to what we were talking about involving, um, now in a large sense of the word, uh, the fact of the matter is that old uh, money and old power structures, uh, you know, in particular countries that were leaders in the past paradigm are finding it very difficult uh, to, uh, you know, basically, um, 
you know, uh, essentially mesh with what we're seeing happening involving the blockchain revolution. And, uh, you know, in a large uh, sense, we'll be seeing much of that uh, really developing over to 2020. And in that same overall theme, um, you know, playing right along into that idea, uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how we watch a lot of these different altcoins that have been uh, basically solidifying themselves in their own key areas. Uh, well, of course, Bitcoin is already sort of doing its own thing. Uh, I mean, this is also one of the key key points that are made time and time again um, that are you know about Cardano the fact that it's very hard to um, nail Cardano to a wall with a valid criticism because of uh, the the fact that they've been able to uh, you know essentially go uh, the route that they have uh, and really not uh, in, in a full sense of the uh, you know fullest definition, I mean, we have to talk about how Cardano has managed to uh, basically work um, in the background uh, in this key point because right now we're seeing a very interesting point where uh, you know the old technologies of the past are you know and of course in particular it's interesting to refer to Bitcoin as sort of an ancient technology, but in that same sense, uh, I mean, it is very interesting sort of uh, reference to point pay. It, you know, point and pay attention to in that same sense. Uh, so, I mean, I want to talk about Ethereum. Um, you know, is in for a massive uh, correction. Um, here's how uh, low it could fall. Uh, I mean, I have a couple different articles on Ethereum. Uh, one in particular, Ethereum block time reduced by 25%. Well, many of you wanted me to talk about the hard fork. Uh, so here it goes. Uh, I, mean, I just want to read first uh, from this article. Data reported on Ethereum block uh, explorer, uh, you know, shows that uh, from January 1st to January 4th, the daily average block time on the blockchain decreased from 17.16 seconds to 12.96 seconds. This translates to 24.48 shorter block time. Uh, and then, of course, I want to give you this uh, perspective as well. Ethereum has found itself caught within a firm uptrend over the past several days, which has allowed it to quickly near its next key resistance level of 140 uh, with a break above the resistance that uh, exits here potentially following it to a climb significantly higher in spite of the bullishness of this rally it is important to note that analysts are still explaining that uh, ETH is in a corrective phase and may be on a cusp of uh, you know incurring another massive drop that could send it as low as $80 in the near term uh, and I would say uh, you know it is sort of um, interesting to be on the lookout for that correction um, and not even notwithstanding I mean I think that I mean it would be interesting to see if Bitcoin had a correction like that as well I was not expecting Bitcoin to remain in the 7,000 in the mid 7,000s for this long um, I mean if you had asked me two months ago I probably would have told you that I expected Bitcoin to be somewhere along uh, net down further to like the 6,000s I'm sort of uh, becoming increasingly bearish uh, in terms of, because I think right now the market is scared um, you know about uh, all the recent news and all these different things that we've been seeing and it's going to be a, a interesting next couple of weeks as we see a lot of these different things um, you know really uh, mesh out uh, so coinbase boss uh, thinks this will happen to crypto in 2020s uh, you now this is interesting uh, user base to expand uh, to 1 billion for on scalable uh, blockchain uh, scalability utility and privacy to re uh, re you know, reshape crypto sector uh, in the coming decade. And I would imagine that that's a very conservative number. One billion seems quite small. I would say blockchain will have uh, probably more, uh, a higher number than that. Um, but that's, of course, just my opinion. And remember, this video is entirely my opinion. <laughs> I'm not your financial advisor. I'm not your dad. I'm only making this video to give you guys my perspective. Make sure you guys comment down below uh, letting us know. I mean, this video is entirely just me uh, just telling you what I think day to day. Make sure that you guys subscribe as well. really helps out the channel. Uh, and then it will be interesting to see how um, Bitcoin... 
um, you know, all these different things will be uh, evolving in particular while we watch the Internet of Things and pay close attention to the direction that the Internet is actually headed, um, in particular as we see a lot of these different variables coming together uh, in the next time frame. So uh, with all that being said, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this content. I think this has been a pretty good video. We've covered a lot of uh, things that I didn't have time to in the past content, uh, like yesterday's video. Um, but it's all good. Uh, see you guys in the next one. Uh, have a good one.